Okay, so now I'm going to do three more examples of limits involving trig functions. And at a glance, it looks like all of these examples, I'm going to make use of this, uh, these first two limits. The limit of theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta. Well, that's the same thing as the limit of theta approaches 0 of theta over sine theta. Uh, they both equal 1. Okay. So for part f here, we've got the limit as t approaches 0 of sine squared of 3t over t squared. Now, if you immediately substitute this in, we're going to get sine squared of 0 over 0 squared. And again, sine squared of 0, recall, that's just sine of 0 squared. Well, sine of 0 is 0, so if we uh, square it, we still got 0 over 0. So we have our indeterminate form. We have our indeterminate form. Okay, so what we have to do in this case is we have to be a bit more clever. And so we've got the limit as t approaches 0. I'm going to rewrite this sine squared of 3t. I can rewrite that as sine of 3t times sine of 3t. I mean, that's exactly what it means. And what I'm going to do, I've got a t squared. I'm going to write this. I'm going to break these up. I'm going to have a t and a t. Now, the way that we had our limit written a second ago, we've got the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta. Um, that equals 1. So, you know, this is very not correct notation, but the way I think about it is, if we have sine of some stuff, whatever it is, and we have that exact same stuff in the denominator, okay, it's got to be the exact same thing, it says as long as that stuff is approaching 0, it says that limit's going to equal 1. Okay, so what I'm trying to get across here is we've got a 3t, but we only have a t. Same thing here. We've got a 3t and only a t. Well, in a perfect world, I would have a 3 right here, and I would have a 3 right here. And then I could use this limit result. Well, hey, again, uh, I think, is there a way to make that happen algebraically? Well, sure, I can just multiply 3 here, and I can multiply a 3 right here. But really, what, what have I done? I've, you know, if you multiply this all out, obviously, we've got a 3 times a 3. So really, I've multiplied the denominator by 9 by doing this. So, well, algebraically, since I've multiplied the denominator by 9, all I have to do is multiply the numerator also by 9. And now the limit law say, hey, we could write this as the limit as t approaches 0. And this would you know, be the step I would really skip. But it, what we really have is we have the limit of 3t, excuse me, sine of 3t over 3t times the limit as t approaches 0 of sine of 3t over 3t. And now I'm going to run out of room. And then we have the limit as t approaches 0 of 9. So I'm just breaking it up this part multiplied by that part multiplied by that. Well, so now I'm going to use this result, my bad notation result. So it says the limit as t approaches 0 of sine of 3t over 3t. That's just going to be 1. Same thing with the second limit. The limit of a constant is always the constant. So it says what we're left with is 1 times 1 times 9 or we're left with the value of 9. So that's going to be our solution for, for that problem. Okay, so again, you're just trying to, again, you know, if we had a 10t, I would, have, I would want a 10t down here. So part G, uh, kind of the same idea here. So we've got the limit as x approaches 1. We've got sine of x minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. I guess I should say, you know, I guess I'm kind of, I, 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 I've thought about this problem already. If you plug in x equals 1, you're going to get sine of 0, which is going to give you 0. In the denominator, you've got 1 squared plus 1 minus 2. If you're going to get 0 over 0, we're in indeterminate form. So that's the first thing worth pointing out. Well, x squared plus x minus 2, anytime I see a quadratic, I'm just always... I don't know, I feel like trying to factor it. It seems like a lot of times that's, that's uh, the, the, the thing that helps. 
x squared plus x minus 2, that factors as x minus 1 times x plus 2. Okay, so you can check that that's correct. Well, now I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 1 of sine of x minus 1 over x minus 1 times the limit as x approaches 1. You can think about there uh, being a, a multiplication by 1 in the numerator. So we've got 1 over x plus 2. So I'm just breaking it up like I did my last example. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, this result that I used with my bad notation. Notice as x approaches 1, uh, we're going to get 0 inside here. We're going to get 0 here. It's, uh, it's uh, very much like, it's, it's the exact same result we did before. Sometimes, and if, if this makes you happier, and it used to make me happier, we can even do a little change of variable just to verify this part. Um, notice if we let, let's say, t equal x minus 1. So suppose I replace the x minus 1 with t. As x approaches 1, as x approaches 1, well, if you take a number closer and closer and closer to 1, uh, t is going to get closer and closer to the value of 0. So if we do a little, a little relabeling here, I could rewrite this limit by saying, equivalently, it's the limit as t approaches 0 of sine of t over t. I'm just replacing the x minus 1 with t. I'm replacing the x minus 1 with a t. And again, I've got to change my limit out front because now I'm using t. Well, this is exactly uh, this is exactly the result that we wanted, and we could even leave the other one in terms of x. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, we've seen that this limit is exactly equal to one, and for the second part, this is one where we can just plug it in and evaluate it. So we have the limit as x approaches one of 1 over, well, we would have 1 plus 2, which would be 3. 4, we would have 1 third as our solution. So again, the thing that I guess uh, that I recognize, again, is we have the exact same thing here, the exact same thing here. Based on the limit, they're both getting close to 0, both getting close to 0. And I know in that case that I'm going to get 1 for that portion. But again, sometimes some, uh, some people Again, if you're showing your work on a test or a quiz, people may want to see this relabeling. So, of course, ask um, your teacher or your professor. If, uh, if not, then I would say as long as you're recognizing that, go for it. Just, just do it. So let's do one more part H because, again, it, it, uses, it uses the same stuff. Again, if we substitute in T equals 0, we're going to get tangent of 0 over sine of 0. That's 0 over 0. So again, we're going to have to do some more stuff. Um, all I'm going to do is, again, make use of my those, those limit results. So we could write this as tangent of 5t over 1 times 1 over sine of 2t. So I'm just breaking up my fraction. And the reason I'm going to break up my fraction, I can write tangent as sine of 5t over cosine of 5t. And again, that still hasn't helped uh, in the sense that if we plug in t equals 0, we're still going to get 0 over 0. I'm going to break this up one more time just to illustrate where everything's going. So I've got sine of 5t. And I could put this over 1. I guess let me go ahead and even do that. Times 1 over cosine of 5t. Times 1 over sine of 2t. OK, so Notice that for the, the middle part, if we were to plug in t equals 0, we would get 1 over cosine of 0, which would be 1. And to me, you know, this part, there's sort of no problem. I'm not worried about that part. Ultimately, it's the fact that if we plug t equals 0 into the last, you know, the last factor, we're going to get 0 in the denominator. 
But this is where, again, I'm going to go back to these two results. Okay, So I'm going to do the same thing, basically, that I did on my very first example. So I've got sine of 5t. To be able to use that limit result, I would like to have a 5t in the denominator. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the denominator by 5t. Okay. Well, so that means somewhere in the numerator, right, we've got to multiply by 5t. And sometimes I even like to make a little extra fraction. This kind of collects all my, all my um, extra stuff. So I've got a 5t in the denominator. Somewhere I've got to multiply the numerator by 5t. Okay, so that's in the back of my mind. We have sine of 2t in the denominator. I would like to have a 2t in the numerator. Well, we said we've got to, since we multiplied the denominator by t, we've got to have a t somewhere in the numerator. Why don't we multiply, why don't we stick that t right there? Well, again, we don't want 5t, we want a 2t. Okay, so if you undo the algebra so far, the t's would cancel out. What I've really done is, also, I've multiplied the numerator by 2. Well, let's just multiply the denominator by 2. And then, if, since I've multiplied the denominator by 5, why don't we just go ahead and multiply the numerator by 5? So, again, obviously, if you get rid of everything that I've just added here, these are all going to cancel out, which means we're doing the algebra correct. But now we've got these results. I've got, I can use my limit result on this part. I can use my limit result on this part. The middle part, we can just plug and chug. And then at the very end, we have the limit of a constant. So we've got the limit as t approaches 0, sine of 5t over 5t, that's just going to be 1. We would have 1 over cosine of 0 when we substitute. Um, again, our next limit is going to be exactly equal to 1. Whoops, almost put an equal sign. And then we still have our 5 halves left over. Recall that cosine of 0, that's just equal to 1. So really we have 1 times 1 times 1 times 5 halves, and that's going to be our solution, uh, 5 halves. So again, we're just using, we're really just using these, these two uh, limit results again. It's just a matter of sort of breaking it up and again, just being careful with the algebra.